In today's episode, we're going to look at some insect identification and a particular question. That is, what's the difference between a bug and a beetle? Now, in everyday conversation, you might have used the word bug, heard the word bug being used. It can refer to any sort of creepy crawly, usually an insect, but any sort of skittering, many-legged creature. However, bug, in sort of entomological terms, the study of insects, has a very specific meaning, and to separate that when you're talking about those specific bugs from bugs in common parlance, in general conversation, they're referred to as true bugs. True bugs are insects, and they're insects that belong to the order Hemiptera. Now, within Hemiptera, these creatures have specific attributes, and the main one to look out for from an identification purposes is um, a beak. That's its uh, common name. It can be called a rostrum, but it's a needle-like, piercing mouth part. A bit like a hypodermic needle, we may have discussed them in relation to shield bugs. So the rostrum, or beak, the piercing mouth part, is used to, unsurprisingly, pierce things and suck out fluids. And the things it's piercing can either be plants, so it's sucking out plant fluids, or pierce other insects and suck out their bodily fluids. Yummy. The beak isn't always obvious, it is often folded away underneath the insect, so you will need to look at your specimen from multiple angles to work out what it could be. Due to the nature of these piercing mouth parts, true bugs, like corrupt politicians from the 1960s, subside on a liquid diet. True bugs also have two pairs of wings, so the hind wings are the back ones, they're thin and membranous, and over the top of them, folded, is usually the forewings, which can either be membranous, hardened, or a little bit of both. Another identification feature is that due to the overlapping nature of the wings of many true bugs, if you're looking down from above, they seem to form a cross shape or X pattern. Also, an important point, true bugs undergo incomplete metamorphosis as part of their life cycle. So incomplete metamorphosis is the process that occurs when the juvenile insects look like miniature versions of the adults. Perhaps they're missing wings, and they are definitely smaller, but the example I think I can give is the shield bugs look like little mini shield bugs and they get bigger. They do change shape, but it's classed as an incomplete metamorphosis. As opposed to a complete metamorphosis, such as the uh, caterpillar changing into the butterfly. Looks completely different to the adult. So now let's contrast true bugs with beetles. So beetles belong to the order Coleoptera, which means sheaf wing, and their wings are very different from the true bugs. Again, beetles, like true bugs, will have two pairs of wings. The hind wings are thin and membranous, they're used for flight, but unlike true bugs, the forewings of beetles are hardened and usually opaque, and they form what are called elytra, or wing cases. Their job is not to provide really any help in flying, it's to protect the thin, membranous hind wings. When a beetle isn't in flight, the hind wings are folded away, and the elytra, the forewings, meet in a neat line straight down the back. That is your first key identification feature. If you found a small insect, and it's got wing cases that are meeting in a neat line down the back, perfectly straight, you've got yourself a beetle. Crossing over like that, overlapping, it's a true bug. The mouth parts of beetles are very different from true bugs, although they can be quite tricky to see. They're described as either biting or chewing mouth parts, kind of like a little pair of scissors or pliers cutting away through. As a result of these mouth parts, the beetles can eat a huge range of things. So whereas the true bugs had a liquid-only diet, Beetles can munch their way through, well, pretty much anything. There's lots of specialism, colonising loads of different habitats. Some of the beetle families you might be familiar with include the ladybirds, 
gardener's friend, often red and black but not always. Clearly you can see the elytra meeting in a neat line down the back. We've got the leaf beetles, which we covered in a previous episode with tansy beetle, dock beetle. And also there's water beetles, diving beetles, living a, an aquatic life cycle. Another contrast of beetles compared with true bugs is the life cycle. So true bugs underwent that incomplete metamorphosis, beetles undergo a complete metamorphosis. So the juvenile, the larva, looks completely different from the adult. And you can see this particularly with, for example, ladybird larvae look like little tiny scorpions compared to the kind of round button ladybird adults. So there's a, a massive change between the larval stage and the adult stage. That's complete metamorphosis in beetles. And that is the difference between true bugs and beetles. And to summarise, I'm going to use what I always like to use, which are some props. This is a back swimmer, greater water boatman. It is a true bug blind to the order Hemiptera. It has a piercing mouth part for piercing other insects and sucking out their internal juices. It also has the wings, the four wings, overlapping, forming that cross shape like that, which is a classic sign of true bugs. Compare that with the diving beetle. Don't worry about the lack of legs, let's just imagine they're there and haven't been removed in a horrendous predatory accident. It has biting mouth parts, like a little pair of scissors, and also has the wing cases, the elytra, which are opaque, and they're meeting in a neat line straight down the back. And that is classic beetle, coleoptera. So, go out, have a look, see what you can find. It's not always obvious, and sometimes you've got to look closely at the creatures you encounter. Sometimes you need a hand lens, or a decent photograph, and then zoom in and spot those features. I think that's probably enough insect identification to overload you with for one episode. So thank you very much for watching. And if you're out and about and you see any beetles or bugs, send us some pictures. And you see if you can spot the different features. We'd love to see them. And until next time, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.